Section 5.3, Enthalpy. I've already taught you that energy of a system, the internal, internal energy in the system, which is capital letter E, is two parts. You can either add heat to a system and increase its energy to so make it hotter or take it away, or you can do work on a system uh, and give it energy or take away work by the system on something else and, and take away energy. In chemistry, really, there's only two types of work that you can do. You can either do electrical work when you have something like batteries, that's chemistry, or you can do work with gases as gases are expanding. So, for instance, in your car, you've got chambers that have a piston on it and you have burning gasoline and that gas is going to make the uh, air above that gas expand very, very quickly. And that expanding gas pushes a piston and makes your wheels go around. So that's work. So other than those two, there's not very there's very little tight um, work that can be done chemically other than elect um, electrical work or uh, expanding gas work. So uh, since that's true, most chemical uh, reactions will take place in an open container, like a beaker, at normal atmospheric pressure. So uh, chemical and physical changes around us, uh, or especially anything we would do in our lab, is going to essentially take place under constant pressure. Okay, so this brings us to a new term, enthalpy. And enthalpy is one of our E words. We've got energy, enthalpy, and entropy. And it's confusing because we've never used these words ever outside of chemistry class. Enthalpy is defined as the internal energy, remember that's E, that's your capital letter E, internal energy, plus the product of the pressure and the volume of the system. So if enthalpy H equals internal energy plus the pressure volume work of a system, then the change in enthalpy equals the change of the energy plus the pressure volume work. So we've got, we've got delta H, delta H is the change in enthalpy, which you still don't even know what that is, equals the change of its internal energy plus the pressure times the change in the volume of a gas, expanding gas. All right, so now a tiny little bit of work, uh, of uh, mathematics. It, we already know that the internal energy are the two parts that we've already mentioned a few times. We've got the, the heat, that you can add, add heat to a system or take heat away, change the energy, or do work on the system or do the work by the system, and that changes its energy. So if delta E is Q plus W, and we also know that work is equal to the negative pressure times the change in volume. We saw that before. So if P delta V is backwards of this, then this is minus W. So in the case that there is constant pressure, like say in atmospheric pressure in a normal room with Bunsen burners and open glassware, in the case of a normal pressure, enthalpy essentially is the heat into a system or the heat out of a system. Okay, now that's very, very useful. So, so if, I can, if I can understand what is coming, the heat that's coming into a system uh, in terms of how much energy that I have at the beginning and the end or how much has gone out of the system, I can know tons about the energy changes in the system. So at constant pressure, the change in enthalpy is the heat gained or the heat lost. So if delta H equals Q at constant pressure, and Q is positive, meaning that heat, heat is positive at the end. Remember, it's going to be the end minus the beginning. So if the amount of heat has actually gone up, then the change in enthalpy has gone up and it will be positive. So your delta H is positive, then heat 
enters the system. Okay, if delta H is negative, then heat left the system. To the surroundings. So it dumped out of the system into the surroundings and it lost heat energy. If it's a positive, then heat went into the system. So if you have H is positive, let's look at this first one, H is positive, then you have a term called endothermic. So endo is meaning in, thermic is temperature, so the temperature went in. So let's imagine here you have reactants and products, and you have a lower energy in the bonds of the reactants. You have higher stored energy in the bonds of the products. And so the energy from reactants to products, where do you get the energy? Let's say, let's say the reactants have a certain amount of internal energy, but the products that you make have a higher amount. Where do you get the energy to put into those bonds? You steal it from heat. That's why enthalpy is so useful. You're stealing it from the temperature of the glass that it's in or the temperature of the air that's around the test tube. You're actually sucking heat out of the room in order to put store it in bonds in the products. So endo means in. So you can think of reactant plus heat. So heat is actually considered one of the reactants yields products. That's endothermic. Okay, so the opposite is exothermic. Exo is out, thermic is temperature. So if something's getting hot, then it's exothermic. If something's getting cold, why would a test tube get cold? Because the energy that was the, that was the temperature of that test tube got cold because it sucked the energy out of the temperature. So a cold pack that you have in a first aid kit that you break the chemicals inside the plastic and all of a sudden it gets cold uh, to reduce swelling, it's sucking the energy right out of your hand. That's why when you touch it, it's cold. Okay, so a process that's exothermic is backwards. It's dumping heat out into the surroundings, so it's getting hot. So you could say this gets cold, or let's say glass gets cold, and this one the, is going to be the reactants is going to make products and then dump out heat. So heat's considered one of the one of the products and the glass will get hot. Okay, so burning a log on a fire is an exothermic reaction because it's it's dumping out heat. You had way more energy stored in the bonds. So here's reactants here, lots of energy stored in the bonds, but the products which you make were simply water carbon dioxide gas, and some ashes didn't have tons and tons of energy stored in there. So you burn something that's got lots of energy stored in it, like a log. And then when you burn it, you don't just have the products you're making, the ashes, but you're also making the heat. Okay, so the glass is going to get hot or something. The environment's going to get hot because it's dumping heat out.